Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Home Studying Channel with Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Lupita. Today we're going to work in making a doorway, a doorway and hopefully a door, try to do two things at once, to enclose this area so our door can be on the deck without us worrying about running away, even though this is a, an enclosed space, if it is raining they bring all the mud in the world back in the house, right? So we want them to enjoy the outside without um, worrying about it and also down the road we plan to, tend to turn this into a three season porch so it would be nice to have a door because if you screen it without a door it, you don't do anything right so stick around we'll try to show you everything you need to know about how to do this project so one of the advantages of being a DIY project is we can have the dimensions we want right we don't have to buy a pre-cut thing and for looks alone we're going to put the the header of our door ending at the bottom of this right and keep in mind that this is in the slope so the roof drains. So when we put it, you're going to see a greater reveal here than here, right? Mm -hmm. Which is going to be normal. Right. So our first measurement is to get a distance between this and the floor. And we're going to cut it off two pieces. So because this is dimensional lumber, start by checking that the, your pieces are square. And in our case, they are square. So we don't need to do anything else, but often we have to square them, right? right. So we've marked where we need to cut, which for us is, for this project is seven feet, one inch. And we're gonna cut the second board the same way and then we'll stand them up in the frame and see how they look. So here's the dry feet of our jam. We have a header and we have two side loads, the king studs. We really don't need any strength of this. This is just for framing, right? There is not going to be any weight on top of this door. So we do not need to transfer weight. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is our dry fit. Now we're going to take it off and we're going to uh, screw the jam together. So we're going to attach this right here, here, and then we'll bring it back up into the opening and attach it to the... Once again, we're using our uh, trusty square uh, red clamps to hold everything together and because we do not want the, the wood to split we are going to do pilot holes first so we have attached we've created our uh, jam and now we're checking for level and as you can see we are level so the next step is to attach the jam to the vertical pieces and then we're going to start building the door so after you make sure it's level you're going to Attach your jam to your frame here. And we are starting at the top because we've made sure again that that is level. And we want to come down all the way down this way. So we're going to do that on both sides and then we'll slowly just come down each side of the jam here and attach it. So, because these are dimensional lumber, they're not perfect, right? So we use a, a lot of clamps to try to make it as even as we can, right? So the idea, of course, is to get this board, which is part of our jam, to be flush with the post that already exists. And there was a little bit of a, a wonkiness to it, so we used this clamp to bring it this way. And then down below, you can see that we had to bring one this way and then also one in the opposite direction to help hold it flush. Okay, so we're going to continue and we should be done with the jam installation uh, mm -hmm. very shortly. So because this is going to be a door here, we're using a long uh, level. If you have one, as you can see, we're pretty level, right? Mm -hmm. The level let us know that we shouldn't have any problems <coughs> with our door closing and opening. So we're ready to start cutting the door pieces and uh, we're not going to give you our dimensions because they're unique to us, right? It makes no sense. Okay. However, you need to go smaller than your dimensions. The door has to swing and it is not, it is likely that it is not a perfect floor, especially on the deck, right? Mm -hmm. And because the door opens and closes, you need space to allow that. Otherwise, the door will fit nicely, but it will not open. Right. And usually you want about an eighth for the hinge side, for the hinge to operate and about a fourth clearance to open so a fourth plus an eighth is what you want to subtract from mm -hmm. your width 
and about a fourth from your height. Okay. The Mighty Sword is a great tool to make the cuts to your 2x4s and your 2x6s or the 1x6s that you're going to use. So it allows you to make very quickly straight cuts with very little effort. If you do not have power tools, a handsaw can really do the same thing, just slower. So when you're using a, a rip saw or a miter saw, it's the same thing. In order to make a square cut, make sure that you are touching very snugly both fences. The fence to the right and the fence to the left of the uh, blade. Because if you can see, you see there? This is now cutting an angle, right? Mm -hmm. This is 90 degrees, this is not. And I will, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but right. I will exaggerate it even more. Here it's clear, right? right? You have this huge angle. So it's very important that both fences are very tight. And are flush. Now right. that, of course, is predicated upon the idea that your blade is also straight. Right. But even if your blade is perfect, if this is not right, flat, it you're will... still going to get it. Right. Okay. So while you are not looking, we did the frame of the door. And here it is on our huge assembly table. You're getting good at doors, right? And we are using... Initially I was planning to use dowels to make the joint here, but I decided to use screws, which I recessed, so we do not have to use very expensive, much longer screws, since this is a, a 2x4 and will require a very large screw. We assembled the door and now we're going to be ready to fill the recesses we made for the screws. And we're going to do that using dowels. Okay. So we'll put some this glue in dowel. there. Yeah. <laughs> put some glue in there, put the dowel in as far as we can, and then flush cut it, right? Yeah. Okay. And we'll have to do that on both sides. Right now we've just got the one set up. But it fit very nicely in the opening. We've got the uh, hinges installed uh, in the opening right now. And this is intended to open up all the way to the inside because of the puppies. Otherwise, they would just be rushing out the door. Uh, and this is supposed to guard them from doing that. Oh, I did talk. Sorry. Okay, so here we are putting the glue into the recesses that we created. Yeah, it's way too much. little bit of percussive persuasion. Get it as far down into the hole as possible. And then we use the flush cut saw. It looks really nice and it gives just a little bit of a, an, you know, adjustment and that will be taken care of very easily by the Sander. A little sanding makes the plugs flush with the rest of the board, makes them look really nice, almost like an architectural detail, and conceals the screws and also protects them from the weather. So after the door is painted, there's going to be very little evidence that the screws were there, and it makes for a very, very strong connection between the, the two pieces, better than tenon joinery. Once again, I've been framed. Yep. This is where we're going to stop today. We have a few more things to do. We are going to put some styles on the bottom mm -hmm. to match what we have on the deck. That's to make the doggy jail so they can't get out right. and poke their noses through the next step, which is? And we will probably put some support so the dog will not sag over time, even though I think it feels pretty solid right now, right? And also screening. Yes, but... <clears throat> oh yeah, it's really solid. It opens very nice. Right, and we have a bench there, so it doesn't let us uh, open the, the door fully right now, but it can open completely and be flush against that side. Right mm -hmm. now, we have a couple of more details to do. Like we need to put some uh, stops because now the door can overextend. But again, we did quite a lot for today, so we're going to stop here, right? And we're going to install the styles at another point. So if we see that the door has a tendency to uh, sag, we're going to put supports like this, right on the is it supposed to be? Or you can buy uh, L brackets, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah. They're metal. Uh, this way, we can use the same system, and uh, if you can come close here, we can hide the screws. Yep. And we can attach them with screws very nicely. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the next step, if we want the next step. 
And that will look nice, I think, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it will make a couple of the, uh, are they called banisters? What are they called? The the vertical. It might make like a couple of the styles go on a 45 to attach to this instead of attach to the door, but it's really nothing, no major concern on that, right? We can make it happen. It's really the cosmetic stuff next, right? right? All right. So again, we need something here to stop the door. Right? Okay. Yep. Excellent. So how much does this cost? We spend a total of $37 for the material. And of course our label, right? Right. And these are scraps. So even if we install this, this will not cost us anything extra. Because mm -hmm. these are scraps. I don't know, do you like it a little bit with that here? Uh, I like it right now, but I'm not sure how I will like it if you put the, the styles on the bottom. Lessons learned. What did we learn? Uh, Lumber is never straight or... Right. We knew that though. Right. We had re blah, blah, reiterated that. We've reiterated the uh, special nature of your deck. Yes. In fact, <laughs> the door is perfectly square. But uh -huh. the rest of the deck is not. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, never assume square. I guess that's the... Right. Which we knew again, but it is reinforced time and again, right? Right. No matter what, never assume square. And prepare to do a couple of things. For example, <clears throat> ideally, we should have spent one episode one day making the jam and another episode making the door, right? Mm -hmm. I think putting them both at the same episode was a little too much work. I mean, I don't know. What it was a mean. lot, yeah. Well, I like doing this. <laughs> it's very satisfying to know that the door was made correctly and the hinges are working correctly. And yeah. it sounds like it was here for 30 years. Yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect. Well, friends, this was our episode for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We definitely enjoyed making it, sometimes more than others. But, you know, overall, we're very happy with the door. The door is nice and square. Uh, we would have done, done some things different if we had more time, but again, this is an outside deck door. This is not intended to be a, a showcase piece, right? Right. So for what it is, I'm very pleased. How about you? I am. It looks very nice and it feels solid, right? It, it feels oh, yeah. really nice. And just like the same thing, you put a, a plywood insert and you have a plain door, a panel door. Mm -hmm. uh, not as hard, definitely not a 300 or $400 thing that people want to charge. Right. Uh, and again, we could have done better taking a little more time. Uh, other than that, you, you want to come here and show this? This, I, I like our... Yeah, we're going to talk about those again. Yeah. Yeah. We initially thought about dowels, but uh, we did not use dowels. We use these things. What are mm -hmm. they called? I don't know. Well, we ended up using the dowels, but as plugs as and as opposed to the joinery. And I think it looks nice, actually. Oh, yeah. And it still makes it look like it's part of the... The, the design of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you like to see in future episodes and if episodes like that are something that you enjoy. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Opida, let's build something together.